This is Eric Metaxas on the right. He is making some real wild claims about Joe Biden and Hitler. And just give this a listen. Uh, by the way, he wrote a book called Bonhoeffer, pretends to be Dietrich Bonhoeffer's definitive biography. It is not. It is just like full of lies. Bonhoeffer was a pastor in World War II who fought against Hitler. His biography was written in like 1970 by his best friend, student, and a guy that he lived with and shared a bank account with. Now, I don't think there's any shady stuff going on at the time. It was written by him, Eberhard Bethke, not by Eric Metaxas. Anyway, listen to this. If we do not act now, like now, the window is closing. Bonhoeffer tried to get the church to see this in the early 30s. He knew that the window was closing, that there was an opportunity to act. And if the church would do what, what the Lord was asking it to do. And what was the Lord asking the church to do exactly? The Lord wasn't asking the German church to do anything because they weren't doing anything. Almost unanimously stood with the Nazis. Even the people in the uh, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm writing a book about this. Check out my website, omorgan.com. It's releasing soon. Sign up to my newsletter. It's on the right side on my website there if you want to be updated when it releases. But was Hitler an atheist is my question. And the answer is no, I don't think he was. Um, what was his religious stance and why? how do we know that and everything else? And what was the church's role in World War II? Anyway, almost unanimously, including the small subset of the church, 2,000 pastors out of 18,000 total, Almost all of them were Nazis, were at least sympathetic to the Nazi cause. The leader of the church opposition against Hitler was a Nazi, voted for Nazis in 1924, 28, and 33. So, yeah, the Lord wasn't giving them any special information, I have to imagine. Go on. They could save Germany and avert the nightmare that we all know they didn't avert. But they waited and waited and waited. They thought, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. The moment... Yeah. All Hitler wanted the church to continue to be asleep. No, no, that's not that's not the case at all. And and that's what the devil wants. And that's what the devil wants in America. And there are many pastors. All right. Now, let me tell you why this is important. OK, Bonhoeffer, who he mentioned there, he's maybe one of the most lied about figures in World War II history. He was a pacifist and believed in social justice believed that racism was like the root of all evil, practically. I have a few quotes I want to read you from Bonhoeffer. Again, this guy pretends to be some authoritative source because he wrote a book on the subject. A, his book was complete bullshit. He got multiple factual things wrong in his book and didn't correct them in edition number two. I don't know why. Like, for example, in the book, he said Hitler won his election. Uh, no, he didn't. That's a pretty straightforward, easily verifiable fact. Anyway, the point is, he just lies about this guy's life and pretends that he's something he's not. So let me give you a few quotes from Bonhoeffer. Quote number one, ethics is a matter of blood and a matter of history. It did not simply descend to earth from heaven. Rather, it's a child of earth. And for that reason, its face changes with history as well as with the renewal of blood, with the transition between generations. Oh boy, I don't think Eric Metaxas and other televangelists would like Bonhoeffer saying that morality is relative rather than objective and based on the Bible. Let me read a quote from Eberhard Bethke. Again, he lived with Bonhoeffer, and they shared a bank account even. Uh, for the record, scholars believe that they likely were not gay. They were just very close, but people have wondered. Anyway, here's a quote from Eberhard Bethke, his best friend. Recently, I wrote about Christology and the First Commandment, and my basic thesis is that Christ is Christ because in him, the First Commandment is realized. That's why he's Christ. That means that when a different God is made out of Christ, a Hellenistic or Teutonic, that was kind of the basis of a lot of Germany's weird stuff, or Jerry Falwell made American God, then the first commandment is being violated. The Jews have the continuing task of reminding us of the first commandment. I'm trying to, to describe how Bonhoeffer could pray to Christ and the difference between a prayer to Christ that really worships a new God and one that means the first commandment and the dethroning of other gods. Dietrich Bonhoeffer came to America in the early 30s. He left Germany at the height of the terrible stuff when things were really starting to crack down. He came back later, but anyway, 
because he believed being out of Germany was an act of cowardice. That's neither here nor there. So he leaves Germany. He came to New York City and he lived in Harlem for a while. And he was captivated by the jazz scene in Harlem. And he met this black guy and he befriended him. Early 30s, United States, Harlem, befriended this black guy who played jazz. They went to Washington, D.C. to sightsee or whatever. And the black guy was kicked out of an establishment because he was black. And it infuriated Bonhoeffer. Here's another quote from Bonhoeffer. Things do exist that are worth standing for without compromise. To me, it seems that peace and social justice are such things, as is Christ himself. Social justice. Bonhoeffer stood for social justice the whole time. That's all he talked about. That's why he's famous, because he stood for social justice, for caring for people, for not being racist, for not hating gay people, for not being discriminatory against people, for some intrinsic quality about them. The International Bonhoeffer Society released a statement from uh, Bonhoeffer's brother-in-law. His brother-in-law got him involved in military intelligence in Germany and was arrested with Dietrich Bonhoeffer and was executed with Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Different concentration camps, but same time, same reasons, same everything. Donanyi, I think is how it's pronounced, was his name. Hans von Donanyi. Uh, he was Dietrich Bonhoeffer's brother-in-law, and his son, Donanyi's son, says, four men in my family were executed by the Nazis. Hans von Donanyi, my father, honored in Yad Vashem, was killed in the Nazi concentration camp Sachsenhausen shortly before the Second World War ended. Yeah, Bonhoeffer was in Flossenburg. At the same time, the world-renowned theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, brother of my mother, my godfather, was executed in the concentration camp Flossenburg. Oh, I didn't even realize he said it. In 1930, Bonhoeffer began his studies in New York City at the Union Theological Seminary and learned to love and admire the United States of America. I know today he would be extremely unhappy observing a tendency of religious intolerance in the country he once admired so much for its freedom and acceptance. He never could have imagined that this strong, great nation would find itself in the political and ethical crisis it now faces. This is about televangelists and Trump extremists invoking Bonhoeffer's name to get people to support Donald Trump. That's why he wrote this. He's talking about Eric Metaxas and others like him. A nation's heart may race when it feels threatened, fearful, or even terrified, but this heart, no matter how devout, should never tolerate walls nor turn away those seeking help. Talking about immigration, building the wall and stuff. People died at the Berlin Wall. Many people died in Hitler's concentration camps for their unwavering beliefs in the value of their ethics and in their fellow man. These beliefs are now endangered in many Western nations, including, sadly enough, the United States. This is unimaginable. Bonhoeffer's nephew. Everybody in the guy's life is denouncing racism, denouncing hate, denouncing uh, anti-LGBT bigotry, denouncing anti-immigrant bigotry and everything else, and they're denouncing televangelists. And what do we have here? A televangelist invoking Bonhoeffer's name. The moment yeah. all Hitler wanted the church to continue to be asleep, and and that's what the devil wants, and that's what the devil wants in America. And they're so you know what what he's actually arguing right now. Bonhoeffer is famous for having come up with a religious moral justification for assassination. Now Bonhoeffer, contrary to popular belief, was not involved in any assassination attempt against Hitler. They are releasing a movie about this, and I'm I know so much about the subject. It's crazy because I'm prepping for when the movie releases. I'm going to cover it anyway. Nobody had really had to do that before, like justifying an assassination attempt. His justification basically came down to this. If you're in a car and it's pointed at 100 people and there's somebody behind the wheel that's barreling toward them, you have a moral obligation to yank the wheel into a ravine. Even if it kills the person, even if it kills you, it's still a moral obligation to save the other 100 people. In the past, uh, since the 90s, 70s, 80s, 90s, Mostly the 90s, I guess, is when it started. Bonhoeffer's name has been invoked regarding abortion. Now, I hear you asking, how does all of this connect to abortion? The answer is, Eric Metaxas and other televangelists are using Bonhoeffer's religious justifications for assassination 
to call for the assassination of abortion doctors. I'm not joking. That's 100% real. Again, I'm writing about this at length if you want to read about it. OwenMorgan.com. Sign up for the email list. It, it might also be on Amazon already. It just depends. Anyway, um, Eric Mattias is just completely full of shit, and it's disgusting to see Bonhoeffer's history and legacy destroyed, wrecked like this. The guy just made it up and put it in his book and pretended it was real. And now you have to go back and like debunk that. How do you even debunk it? Nobody has written about it. It would be like in uh, 50 years, somebody that I didn't know, I never knew, had no connection to at all, writing a book about me and claiming I cheated on my wife. Now, who's going to disprove that? Who would any or how would anyone disprove that? It's an event that took place that only this person claims to have been uh, privy to. It was never written about or anything. And he can claim all he wants, um, Eric and Taxis can, that it was a secret that he discovered or whatever. And nobody has the time or energy except this guy who has two thumbs and has all the time and energy to put into this. This guy right here. No one has the time or energy to like go through 12 books on the subject to figure out if, what he's lying about. This just disgusts the hell out of me, honestly. I cannot wait for this movie about Bonhoeffer to come out. I'm going to tear it to shreds on, on air. I don't care about false copyright claims. I'm going to use the fair use doctrine to legally review this on my channel. And that's what the devil wants in America. And there are many pastors in America right now who pretend that they don't need to be in this fight. Yep. So what he's calling for is violence. When, he, when anybody invokes Bonhoeffer on the far right today, they're invoking his justifications for violence and assassination. They believe it, it doesn't matter, everything's fine, everything's fine. The window is closing, and I promise Do it now, window's closing, you need to get violent now. I promise you, uh, if, if Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz are elected, they are going to come after pastors and people of faith like you have never seen. You know what's weird? They said this about Biden, too. Is it weird to anybody else that that is literally not happening? Is it not happening this whole time? Huh. Almost like he's lying about this, too. And I say this as a warning. You need to fast and pray for this election. Fast and pray for this election and understand what is at stake. Because there will come a time when you will not have a voice. You will be shut down. That, that is coming to America. It's disgusting to me that he, this guy can make things up brazenly. And, like, nobody from that time period is around anymore to correct or defend it. You know, we have so much information about this guy's life. His fiance Maria, she, he knew her since she was 11 years old. He was teaching her uh, cousins, I think, preparing them for confirmation in the Lutheran church. And uh, she asked, basically, if she could be taught. And he said, she's too immature, basically, right now. She turns 18, and suddenly he gets engaged to her. That's weird. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. He was 36 or 37. She wrote a whole book about their interactions and then died in the 70s, I think. It released in the 70s, at least. Eberhard Bethke wrote his book in the 70s, I think, or between the 50s and the 70s, and then he died. Everybody in Bonhoeffer's life is dead now, obviously. And Bonhoeffer himself died in 1945, in uh, April 1945. Who can defend him? Eric Metaxas is just lying about him, and nobody is here to defend it. He's a best-selling uh, best author for a book of lies and has a massive platform. People who really study this subject. I mean experts, not me. Victoria Barnett has written about this at length. About, she's an expert in Bonhoeffer. Stephen R. Hayes. Mark Nation is another person, wrote a whole book about, well, debunking this guy's book, actually. These people are experts, okay? Experts. They've combed over this guy's entire life, looked at his actual letters, gone to the archives and dug them up, looked at them with magnifying glass, the whole nine yards. And they have tried to debunk this guy, but they don't have a platform. Oh, yeah, this is kind of interesting. I found this tweet from Eric Metaxas from uh, 2020. Super interesting thing for him to say here. Jesus was white, 
did he have white privilege even though he was an entire uh, even though he's entirely without sin is the united methodist church covering that i think it could be important jesus being white is a nazi uh, is a piece of nazi propaganda it's a lie they claim that jesus was aryan he was the first anti-semite and he was an aryan because he wasn't born of joseph who was jewish mary was not jewish in their ridiculous brains and mary slept with a roman soldier named pantera and that's how jesus ended up white because in their mind romans are aryans and aryan equals white even though it's not correct but whatever this is nazi propaganda that eric metaxas is repeating 10 years after he wrote his book did he know is he just colossally fucking stupid or is he lying it has to be one of the two right it has to be Anyway, tell me what you think about it in the comments. This guy is just terrible.